Welcome to a course on sequence and series. In this lecture, we are going to define something called Cauchy sequence. This is one of the most important concept in the course of sequence and series, right? With the help of Cauchy sequence, we will make many more plays on the upcoming things. Okay? Let us formally define a Cauchy sequence. A sequence Pn is said to be Cauchy when if for n comma m greater than equals n where this n is a positive integer. Okay, this must be for n comma n greater than n, this exists, okay, uh, this n must exist for whatsoever the given value of epsilon, okay. Uh, if for some given epsilon bigger than 0, okay. So, first of all, what we are doing is that first we fix our epsilon value. The epsilon value here is the usual uh, epsilon that we chose in the previous uh, context. That is, this epsilon may be any small negligible quantity. You will have to fix that negligible quantity epsilon and you will have to identify some stage n. After that stage, you may pick any two values, right? Such that d of pn, pm is less than epsilon for n comma m greater than or equals n. If we want to uh, redefine these things, this is said to be Cauchy, okay? If for given epsilon greater than 0, there exists a positive integer n such that distance between pn comma pn is smaller than epsilon whenever you choose n and m are bigger than or equals n. So now let us see an example of a Cauchy sequence. Okay, let me consider my pn to be 1 upon n. Right? Here also you may fix the epsilon value to be anything. Okay, let me fix epsilon to be 10 power minus 5. Okay, after this stage, when I choose uh, epsilon to be 10 power minus 5, I must have what is my pn? It is 1 upon n. And what is my uh, pm? It is 1 upon m. This has to be less than what? This has to be less than 1 upon 10 power 5. Right? So the difference between these two things has to be lesser than 1 upon 10 power 5. So, you will have to choose n and m for some n. Here, the problem is to find the value of n. Okay. What can be these things? Supposing I take this is 1 upon 10 power minus 6 and this is 1 upon 10 power minus 5. Okay. What happens here? It is 10 upon uh, 5 minus 10 upon uh, 6 upon this will be what? 10 power minus 6. And this is going to be uh, what? Uh, if I take uh, 10 upon minus 5 as a common thing, I will have minus 10, 9 times of 10 upon this thing, upon these things. Okay? Whether this is less than this quantity, absolute of this is less than 1 upon 10 power 5. Yes. Right? So the n value can be what? It has to be something bigger than this. Okay. Here what is the n value I have chosen? It is 10 power 5 and it is 10 power 6. So whenever I choose, uh, my n can also be 10 power minus 5. Okay. Here my epsilon value is 10 power minus 5 and n value is 10 power 5. After this stage, whatsoever the values that I take, here I may have 1 as well, 10 power my 10 power 5 plus 1, this may be my value, right? Whatever may be the values that I choose, I am able to calculate this stuff and prove this sequence to be Cauchy. Okay, here 
I have not specified about the metric space. I have calculated these things with the help of absolute value. This means what? I am talking about the Cauchy sequence in Euclidean metric space. Okay. So here the metric that I have considered is standard Euclidean metric. Okay. And in the standard Euclidean metric, I am proving the sequence to be Cauchy. In order to prove the sequence is Cauchy in some standard uh, in some metric space with this metric, the one thing that I must have is the a range of the sequence. If I consider the range of the sequence to be E and it is going to be 1, 1 upon 2, 1 upon 3 and it goes this way, this must be a subset of the metric space that I have considered. Okay, I will have to consider some uh, metric space which contains the set E. So what are all the possibilities? This may be the entire real line, okay, and this may be the positive one, or this may be this one, or this may be this one, okay, or this thing. These are all some possibilities. We may have plenty other possibilities as well, but I am considering these five possibilities, okay. In all these five metric spaces, okay, if you consider these as a separate x, okay, all these are different metric spaces for this sequence. Okay, this is a sequence in all these five metric spaces under this metric. Okay, the same metric is defined on all all these sets, and they are metric spaces now. Okay, now I have proved this is a Cauchy sequence in all the five metric spaces. Whether this is convergent in all those five metric spaces, we know this 1 upon n approaches 0 as n approaches infinity. Okay, which means whenever we talk about the convergence of the sequence, this converges to 0. Now, whether this is convergent in a particular metric space or not, for which what should we see? We have to see whether this convergent limit is present in the set or not. Okay, uh, this Pn is convergent in x1 since 0 is a member of it okay and in x4 it is convergent x5 it is convergent but not convergent in x2 and x3 okay but in all the five in all these five metric spaces the sequence is a Cauchy sequence right this might give you an idea that the definition of a Cauchy sequence is different from the definition of a convergent sequence. In the definition of a convergent sequence, what we have? We have d of pn, p is less than epsilon for n bigger than or equals n. Okay. After a certain stage, the distance between the limit and the points in the sequence is negligible. That is what we are saying in the definition of a convergent sequence. Whereas in the Cauchy sequence, what we are saying? After a particular stage, the difference between any two terms in the sequence is negligible. Okay. So here we are not talking about external point which is outside the sequence. Right. Whereas in the definition of a convergent sequence, we are talking about some point which may or may not be present in the sequence. Okay. Hope you have a, a clear understanding of convergent sequence and Cauchy sequence by now. Thank you for watching.